Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to stand out on social media and be seen as the experts that they really are. The latest updates and trends from the social media space presented by me, your social media strategist and coach. Now, let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. In today's episode, I'm going to answer the question whether in 2024 we still need Facebook business pages or if maybe a business can survive and thrive without having a Facebook page. I'm going to present some points that argue against having a Facebook page, but I will also show you the other side and explain the benefits of having one. In this episode, I also want to talk about a few things that you might not even have considered when making the decision of having a Facebook page or not. It's going to be really helpful for you, I hope at least, especially if you're at that stage where you're thinking, well, should I even still bother with Facebook? maybe you have only recently started a business or you are just about to start one and you're wondering if you should even make the effort to set up a Facebook page or if you could possibly also live without one. Obviously for this whole episode we are talking about a Facebook business page and not about personal Facebook accounts. But we will get back to that as well, because that is one of the considerations that we need to take into account. You're probably not going to want to hear what I have to say next, but whether or not you need a Facebook page for your business, well, it depends. It depends on firstly your business, specifically what type of business you have. Is it an online or offline business? How long have you been in business? What type of products or services do you sell? Is there a local component so people can come into your store or not? And secondly, the rest of your marketing strategy. So what other marketing activities apart from social media are you doing to promote your business? Because to be honest, I would argue that a brand like Coca-Cola could survive without a Facebook page because first of all, they're extremely well known. There are barely any people on this world who don't know Coca-Cola and there are only very few countries where you cannot purchase a bottle or a can of Coca-Cola. And secondly, they don't just rely on social media marketing to sell their products. In fact, Coca-Cola and other more traditionally built businesses, or at least businesses that have been around for a while, usually have grown without the use of social media or even digital marketing. I don't know about you, but I have never bought Coca-Cola online or from an ad or have even interacted with one of their Facebook posts. So Instead, they rely on the availability of their products, the way in how they are presented in store, the brand sponsorships that they do, and any other marketing tools. All of that gives them enough visibility that they need at this stage of the brand's journey. If they were to start from zero, like right now in 2024, they would probably use social media marketing to grow. But yeah, I would argue at this stage of the business, they could probably survive without doing any social media marketing whatsoever. And this is obviously very different to when you are a small business or a business that is relatively new. In the very first episode of this podcast, I actually talk about a few reasons why you should market on social media. And As far as I remember, I mean, it has been a little while since I recorded that episode, but as far as I can remember, one of the advantages that I mentioned in that episode, or at least I would assume that I mentioned it, is that social media marketing can be quite low cost for small businesses, which is obviously one of the main reasons why smaller businesses love to market on social media, because we don't always have huge budgets like a brand like Coca-Cola. And that means that with a relatively small budget, we can get quite nice reach. So in that regard, I would argue that especially small businesses and even more so businesses that have a local aspect to themselves can strongly benefit from having a Facebook page, especially because of that low cost aspect. 
Now, one of the main reasons why people ask me if they even need a Facebook page is usually because they personally don't really like to hang out on Facebook. It might be a general aversion to social media, and that is usually something I see with older or more traditional clients of mine, or maybe it's just a personal preference of platforms with people usually either preferring something like LinkedIn or Instagram, or when we look at the more younger demographic, it's usually TikTok or Snapchat. And I think other marketers will have heard similar questions or similar concerns. I know there's this typical excuse or this typical reasoning of business owners when it comes to email marketing that they say, well, I don't like to receive emails from brands, so I'm not going to send any to my customers because they don't want to receive emails either. And it's often just this problem that yeah, that businesses think that they have the same habits or the same behavior than their target audience. And in some cases that might be true, you could be pretty similar to your target audience, but I would say in most cases that isn't true. So you shouldn't consider your personal preference to be the preference of your audience, which then means that even if you personally don't enjoy hanging out on Facebook, your customers might still enjoy doing that. And usually the second question when I explain this to people who don't really like to be on Facebook themselves is, okay, so I need to have a business page, but can I have one without having a personal account? Because I really don't want to waste my time scrolling on Facebook every time I open the feed. And believe me, I totally get that. <laughs> I also prefer Instagram or TikTok over Facebook. But unfortunately, we are not able to have a business page without a personal account. So every single business page has to be connected to at least one personal Facebook account. Now, obviously, there are some workarounds for this problem that I'm going to share with you. You could either just have this personal account and simply not use it. You know, you can um, not upload anything to this profile or you could even lock the profile so you, other people cannot see any of your photos or access any of your personal information if that is your concern with having a personal Facebook account. But if it's more about, you know, being aware that you might waste a lot of time scrolling once you log into Facebook, um, then I can recommend just immediately switching into your business page feed. I always personally find it quite annoying that you have to switch into your business page. But then again, I also see the benefits, particularly in cases like this one, where you don't really want to manage a personal account, but you just want to have it to be able to have a Facebook business page. So today, these two options could be alternatives for you if you really just don't want to really use your personal account. And since we're talking about this more technical back-end side of Facebook, I want to make you aware of one of the huge downfalls, possibly the biggest downfall of not having a Facebook page set up. And that is that you won't be able to run any ads if you don't have a Facebook page. Nope, you won't even be able to run ads on Instagram, on the audience network, on WhatsApp, wherever, if you don't have a Facebook page. And to me, that is a huge disadvantage because, again, this is maybe then an argument for not wanting to have a Facebook page, organic reach on Facebook is really hard to get these days. And others, other reasons why I think a lot of people resist having a Facebook page is because well, they think, well, you know, I'm posting and nobody sees my posts anyway, so why should I bother? And I would have to agree, it's pretty hard to grow a Facebook page organically in 2024. But there are lots of strategies that we can use apart from paid ads, like sharing your posts into local Facebook groups. And on top of that, it might not necessarily be that important that people see your posts organically in their feed. But I would argue that one of the most important things when it comes to Facebook is that at least you can be found on there. But more on that later. So yes, you can try to grow organically. There are certain strategies, 
But if you really want to take your growth seriously, even if that is at some point in the future, you will probably have to run Facebook or Instagram ads. And for that, you simply will need a Facebook page. And to be honest, Facebook ads are pretty awesome. I know that they sometimes get a little bit of bad reputation that, you know, you can waste a lot of money on there, which is obviously true if you don't know what you're doing. But the potential that Facebook ads have is enormous. I'm just thinking about, you know, boosting a post so it gets more engagement and more people see it. That is probably the most commonly used Facebook ad, I would argue, especially with small businesses. But there is a whole ecosystem of ads that you could build for your business to make your marketing more effective. And one of my favorite examples is having an ad set up for everyone who has added something to your online shopping cart, but then hasn't finished the checkout process. So you can have an ad running all the time in the background that is just played out to those people to kind of remind them to finish their checkout process and, you know, actually make you a sale. It's these little things that can make a huge difference in your bottom line because you're not losing out on customers that you have put a lot of effort into acquiring in the first place just because of that tiny little step that is missing at the end. And there are lots of other examples of how you can use Facebook ads to just make more money in your business. But just as an overall summary, uh, if you want to take business growth seriously, sooner or later, you will have to run some sort of Facebook ad. So make it easy for yourself and set up that Facebook page now so that you can actually run ads later on. Because I get in touch with so many businesses that want to run ads and then we have a session together. And in this first session where we could just be working on the ad, we usually spend so much time fixing the whole back end of things, uh, trying to figure out when or like that they don't have a business page. We need to set that up. And yeah, it's a big mess. So set it up right from the start so you have it and you don't need to feffle around with it later on. Now let's talk about target audience. Lots of businesses argue that their target audience isn't hanging out on Facebook and that they don't really want to rely on Facebook to make sales. Which, fair enough, you should never rely on simply one platform in your marketing anyways. That's what I mentioned before with Coca-Cola, right? They, they don't put all of their eggs into one basket. Just as much as you don't need to be on all the social media platforms. But this is simply a very big one. Facebook is still the most dominant social media platform in the market. There's almost 3 billion people that use Facebook actively every single month. So you can't tell me that your target audience is not on Facebook. Coming back to the ads again, maybe your organic posts aren't reaching the right people. But with ads targeting, you can make sure that your content reaches exactly who you want it to reach. I've done a little bit of research and I actually found that 54% of Facebook users say that it is still their primary hub for researching brands. And 66% of all Facebook users routinely explore local business pages on Facebook at least once a week. So there we come back to what I mentioned before with the not necessarily using Facebook to reach new people, new audiences, even though you can do that as well, but to just have it as a place where people can find you and your business and more importantly, find out about how they can contact you, how they can, look, how they can go to your website and just be aware that you exist. And with that point, I would also argue that having a Facebook page set up that, you know, has at least a few recent posts gives your business some legitimacy and makes you look more professional. If I look up a business on Facebook and I routinely do that, you know, out of professional interest and I don't find them, I don't find any Facebook page whatsoever, that to me is a sign that it's a little bit suspicious, you know, like either it, the business doesn't even exist. Maybe it's not even open anymore. And if I would were to put on my marketing glasses, then I would say that they don't invest much in their business growth. 
And to be honest, it's not even just a growth issue. It's also just a convenience issue. A lot of social media users these days, they just expect that they can reach you on your Facebook page and get in contact with you. Sure, like they can send you an email, but it tends to be much faster if you just shoot someone a DM on Facebook. And if I consider the people that reach out to me, a lot of them come through my Facebook page because they have either seen one of my ads or they have come from a local Facebook group or even from my organic posts. And they ask me a question like, can you help me with this, this and that? And then usually I will refer them onto my email or will book a call. But there's still a considerate amount of people who contact me through my Facebook page. So again, it's just a convenience thing for your customers. I would even compare it to you know, not having a website or not having a phone that people can call you on. Well, okay, no, actually, <laughs> the phone one, um, I, I'm going to take that one back because I don't have my phone number anywhere, so people cannot call me because I'm a millennial and I simply do not like to be called or to call someone else, like friends, family, okay, but... Uh, anyone else no thank you and I find it always really funny when people send me emails like hey like I was trying to call you but I couldn't find your phone number anywhere yes there is a reason for that it's not because I forgot to put it somewhere there is a reason why there is no phone number because I don't want to be called at random hours because I have stuff to do and I find it much more efficient if we say you know like, let's jump on a Zoom call at this specific hour. Then we can both prepare our questions and prepare answers. And, you know, I'm a millennial. I don't like phone calls. That's just as a side note. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a phone call. But then again, you know, like for some businesses, you really expect them to have a customer service that you can call on the phone. So, yeah, it's just a general thing of legitimacy and convenience for your customers. It's just one. Yeah, it's just one of these things that people expect from a business and if you don't fulfill these expectations it can be a reason why people don't want to work with you or they don't buy your products. In addition to it being convenient for your customers if they can find you and contact you through your Facebook page you're also missing out on a lot of tools or types of posts that you don't have on other platforms. I'm thinking of Facebook events, for example. Sure, like you can set up a separate event thingy on like Eventbrite or one of those pages, but so many people actively go to the events tab on Facebook to see what's going on around them in the next few weeks and, you know, like specifically look for events that are coming up. So if you're a business that has um, somewhat of an offline component or even like would work for online as well I would strongly recommend to have a Facebook page because you can set up events whether that is your uh, anniversary event or any special like I don't know a Valentine's Day um, dinner event or you know in-person workshops like I do or any other specific events you really don't want to miss out on that awareness that a Facebook event can give you. And by the way, you can also promote events in your Facebook ads. Another type of post you would simply miss out on is simple link posts, especially if we compare it to a platform like Instagram, where we cannot add clickable links to our Instagram captions. So this is something that we can do on Facebook, which obviously makes it so much easier to drive traffic to a website or wherever else you want to send your uh, followers. And lastly, and I've mentioned this already before, Facebook groups are so beneficial for businesses. It's actually one of the strategies that we have used to build my partner's physiotherapy business here in Kapiti. Um Maybe I should actually do a separate episode on that one day as well. Let me know if you would be interested in hearing how we marketed his business and how we basically filled up his books in the first year. So yeah, again, you're missing out on a variety of tools or types of posts that you don't necessarily have on other platforms. And as you know, one of the most important things in marketing is presenting your offer in a variety of ways and like keep reinventing how you talk about your offer. And if you don't have your Facebook page, you are restricting yourself in how you can promote your business. Okay, by now I think you can guess what my 
professional opinion on having a Facebook page is from a personal perspective. However, I would say I don't really mind having a Facebook page because I still I would say relatively enjoy using Facebook. I mean, I have mentioned that before that I prefer to hang out on Instagram or TikTok, but I just see the benefits of using Facebook because everyone is using it and it's easy to get in contact with people on there. But I want to finish this episode with a little bit of hope for those of you who are really, really resisting to use Facebook and would really rather not have to manage yet another platform. If you really want to do the bare minimum, do the following. Set up your Facebook page, set up your Instagram and connect the two. Now you're going to go into your settings and you're going to activate cross-posting. So every time you post something on Instagram, it will automatically post to your Facebook page as well. That is both stories and posts. The very bare, bare, bare minimum in cross-posting is posting the exact same thing onto your Facebook as you're posting on your Instagram. But if you wanted to put a little bit more effort into it, then adapt the post to the platform. What I mean with that is, for example, on Instagram, you would use hashtags, which we don't really use on Facebook. So at least get rid of the hashtags when you cross-share it to your Facebook. I usually use the Meta Business Suite scheduling tool. It used to be called Creator Studio, but now it's just called Scheduler, I think. You can schedule both posts at the same time. And it's really convenient because you basically have two fields. You have your Facebook post field and then your Instagram one. And you can just copy your caption into both of them and then adapt it depending on the platform. So that's really convenient and takes two seconds to do. So that would be a step above bare minimum. <laughs> but if you really cannot be bothered, just activate the cross posting. And at least, you know, you'll have something going out on your Facebook page. Because <laughs> believe me, I have seen Facebook pages in the past. And I would say this is especially typical for like local businesses that don't really rely so heavily on social media marketing. They will have the classic Merry Christmas, Happy Easter type of post, but there's not much going on apart from that. Maybe the occasional, sorry, we're closed today because of unforeseen circumstances or, you know, like we're closed for the summer holidays, whatever, those kind of posts. But apart from that, there's not much happening. So, you know, like if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated than that, at least have the cross posting on so that there are some posts going out. And what that is going to do is it's simply sending a signal to your customers or anyone who finds that page that you're open for business and you're not completely slacking. In the end, it's a very personal decision to make whether you want to have a Facebook page or not. But if someone were to ask me, which two platforms should I focus on when it comes to social media marketing? You know, like what are the platforms that 90% of the businesses can thrive on and really benefit from, then I would say it's still Instagram and Facebook. So if you're really just wanting to do one or two platforms, go for these two and don't bother with the other ones. But again, take this with a grain of salt. This is my professional opinion. And like I mentioned in the beginning, it's highly dependent on the type of business, the maturity of the business, local or not local, what other marketing you're doing, etc. So, you know, this is my opinion. This is what I would recommend to clients. But again, this always depends on where you're at, what you're doing and so on. I hope this episode could help you in making that decision or even make you aware of some of the consequences or, you know, things that you should consider before actually making the decision. So let me know if you enjoyed the episode, but also if you would like me to do more episodes on specific platforms or maybe even invite some experts onto the podcast to talk about specific platforms like TikTok, LinkedIn. We've already done a Pinterest one, uh, but yeah, let me know if that would be interesting to you and what you'd like to hear more of on this podcast. Until then, I'll hear you next time when it's again time to talk socials.